nukes except for North Korea, apparently. Um, they've been used for more conventional weapons. And I used this camera uh, in 1981, believe it or not. Uh, it used to be at the University of Denver, and we used it for uh, the, at the time, the world's biggest non-nuclear detonation, an explosive detonation, about 620 tons of ammonium nitrate fuel oil at White Sands Missile Range. So I fielded this camera and photographed it a quarter of a million frames a second. So I'm no stranger to this camera. And because at the time it was a government piece of hardware, and I've always wanted to point it up in the sky to photograph a lightning strike, but I thought the feds would get after me if I did that. So I never did it. And since I left the university in 1996, the camera sat here and gathered dust because I was the only idiot that knew how to run the camera. And so it basically got mothballed. Somebody decided to go ahead and get rid of it off the inventory, and they went through the proper government procedures. I had a friend of mine um, uh, tip me off that they were going to sell it. I says, dude, do you want the camera? He was collecting stuff. <laughs> right? So I said, honey, I'm going out to get, you know, I, I, looks like I won the bid on a camera. I'm just going to go out and pick it up. Her tip off should have been I brought my big steak bed truck. Get it. <laughs> and when I brought it home, of course, this monster is six feet high, 1,600 pounds, sitting on the back of my truck. And uh, I pull out the driveway, and she just walked up there and just did this. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much did it cost to build originally, and what did you pay for it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, planned, I believe it was about uh, about a quarter of a million dollars. Second. So the, the, the objective is get the first strike slow, then run the camera up. And that's my objective, hopefully, this spring and summer. So yeah, feel free to come in. There's there's folks in here already. The operating position up front. And the reason I chose this truck is simply because I can walk from the driver's position in the back and operate the camera, so I don't have to get out of the truck. I just pull over and start running the camera. Oh, uh, I put my bid in in 2006. No hill damage yet. Better than his other truck. Yeah, right. This I like that they have the cameras <laughs> up all over. Yeah. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, process film, and so I felt. So you have this thing called rewrap, and with film, you have to shut the light off to the camera within 20 microseconds. In order to do that, what I have done before is actually taken two metal plates separated by about 20 microseconds. The problem is, I do not want to be carrying explosives, and I do not want to be carrying electric detonators and electric fields that are produced by a lightning strike. <laughs> so, the idea then is to convert it over to all digital, because I can then sequence the digital CCD images off and on at will. It's a far better way to do it, and obviously a lot safer. Where's the actual camera? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, the turbine, the turbine actually sits right in the center of, of this hub. And then the mirror, basically the three-side mirror, just basically wraps it all the way around as it's sped up. These are the these are the helium bottles that spin up. The operating position is up front here, so I control it. So more more helium I give it, the faster the turbine spins. And then I got a conversion chart that tells me revolutions per second on the turbine gives me X amount of frames per second.